Sunday morning and welcome to the historic Rush Metropolitan AME Zion Church in beautiful downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. We welcome you to our virtual worship. Come and be filled with the Holy Ghost as we partake of the biblical bread of life. We believe that a breakthrough is right around the corner and we hope you enjoy this virtual Rush experience. of your presence. We ask God that you will change us, heal us, deliver us, give us all that we need and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our morning hymn comes to us from hymn number 504. This song says, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Now, 
first on my side. Angels descending, bring from above. And those of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. In his love, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Is it my Savior? Is it my Savior? All the day long. Hallelujah. We're praising our Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Amen. Amen. And you know, when we talk about this being the way that we tell our story about the blessed assurance that Jesus has given us, you know, we want to talk about how faithful God has been to us. And this song says, as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can see how your love has guided me because with that blessed assurance, you've been so faithful. Amen. As I look back over my life, I can see how your love is guiding me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me, and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Is it because of your mercy now that we are not consumed? Because thy compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faith. Oh, hey, hey, yes. As I look back over my life. How your love is guiding me Even though I've done wrong You never left me alone But you forgave me And you kept on blessing This I recall to my mind Therefore I have hope Is it because of your mercy Now that we are not consumed Because thy compassions fail not They are new every morning Great What you done for me? How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You've been my joy in my time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in my time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you done for me. How you loose 
my shackles and you set me free. I made a way out of no way. Time of darkness in today. You've been my joy in my time of sorrow. Oh, for my tomorrow. Peace in my time of snow. Strength when I'm weak and worn. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. Rain down on me, almighty God. Shower me with your grace. Flood me with your mercy. For I am a dry and barren land, consumed by the rot of my sin. Burdened beneath the weight of my transgressions. Pour out your loving kindness. Drench my heart with your presence. Renew my soul, refresh my purpose, reignite my passion. Rain down on me as I own my iniquities. Rain down on me as I humbly confess. Rain down on me as I enter your presence. Rain down on me, Almighty God. Rush Metropolitan and here are your announcements. All meetings will be held via Zoom. Please use the meeting ID number 556-977-4267. You can also use the conference call number 1929 <laughs> On Tuesday at 11 a.m. is our Tuesday morning Bible study call that will take place via conference call. On Thursday at noon is our prayer call and the Deaconess Board will lead us in prayer. Due to the coronavirus, office hours have been reduced. A mobile office number has been created for the church. The number is 919-822-2174. Please know that we are doing everything we can to stay connected to meet the needs of the congregation. This concludes your morning announcements. Have a great Sunday.
the Lord rush, we've come to the moment in our service now where we're going to be dipped down into the storehouse of knowledge, divine knowledge. And we're going to be served a morsel of the bread of life, which is the word of God. You know, the word of God says, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And we're going to be served today by none other than our own Reverend Dr. Maurice Alexander Hardin. But first, we want to make sure that we set the atmosphere. And so I want you to pray and meditate with me as we listen to this song, this song which says, Jesus is a friend to me. And all along the way, each and every day, he is a friend. Now there's a price to that friendship. And this song says, I will serve him. I will serve him all my days. Yes, I'll serve him each and every way because he's a friend. He's a friend to me. Amen. Jesus is a friend to me. He's a friend so faithfully. Jesus is, he's a friend to me. favorite of the Gospels, Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, and when you get there, go down to verse 12, is where we'll begin our reading this morning, Mark, first chapter, beginning at 
verse 12. And we'll be reading from the common English version of the Bible. It says this, At once the Spirit forced Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, announcing God's good news, saying, Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. Just a few moments, I want to preach from this thought. God in the wilderness. God in the wilderness. Would you pray with me? Spirit of living God, we ask now that you would decrease the flesh of your servant and increase the spirit. Let the words of your servant's mouth and meditation of your servant's heart be acceptable in thy sight, that your people be edified and empowered to know that they too can do the impossible through the power of your son, Jesus Christ. Allow us through this word to leave this worship experience better than what we came. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to reflect on the reality that though there are those of us who find ourselves in wilderness experiences. Elder Burns, the reality is, whether you realize it or not, some of us are going through the most challenging and crippling experience of our lives. And some of us are going through, and no one knows nor understands the pain that you are experiencing. But Sister Johnson, I need us to know that we're not the first to go through the wilderness. Because before you even knew what a wilderness was, God was in the wilderness. As we look in the text, we're given the detailed description of the baptism of Jesus. Brother Graham, the text tells us that as Jesus is baptized, Heaven opens up, and God speaks to his son, Jesus. And God provides a word of confirmation, Brother Wright. He lets Jesus know that he is indeed sent on assignment. He lets Jesus know he is indeed his son. And this moment is a moment of celebration. When we read the text, the celebration is cut short because the text says God the Father sends Jesus into the wilderness. And as we examine the text, Reverend Mitchell, we are presented with what theologians call Christology. When you understand Christology, you begin to learn that there is a thing called high Christology and there is something called low Christology. High Christology suggests that Jesus was more divine than human. Low Christology suggests that Jesus was more human than divine. If you begin to look at the text from the lens of a high Christology, you then begin to see the text differently because if Jesus was more divine than human, then that would mean that when God sent Jesus into the wilderness, he was not sending a separate individual, but rather God sent himself. 
Watch, if God is in the wilderness, that meant that the atmosphere had to change. Because watch now, the very presence of God denotes change. That means that whatever was in the wilderness that was demonic had to flee because of God's presence in the wilderness. And so watch now, God was in the wilderness before you stepped into the wilderness. Before you had to deal with a wilderness experience, God had already been there. And because God had already been through the wilderness while he was there, he took care of some things. I need someone to hear me. Whatever wilderness experience you are in, you don't have to worry because God has already taken care of it. And so for every person who's in the wilderness now, you ought to just celebrate God for the fact that God has already been here before. And so here it is. God is in and has been in the wilderness. God himself has taken care of things so that when we found ourselves in the wilderness, we didn't have to worry as we examine the text, there are three things that we find when God is in the wilderness. We understand he went for us. As we look in the text, you understand Jesus is sent into the wilderness. But Jesus goes not for his sake. He goes for our sake. Dr. Grant, Jesus does not go into the wilderness to get something out of it for himself. He did not go asking, what am I going to get out of this? He went for us. Jesus did not ask what the compensation would be. He just went understanding there was a need. And as Christians, we need to understand that this faith we call Christianity is not about what we can get out of it. It's about what we can give to it. What are we willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of God? The problem sometimes in the church is that many times we only do in order for our name to be called. The truth of the matter is God should not have to do another thing for us simply because God has already blessed our life. And so whatever we're called to do, we should do it joyfully. But listen, Jesus went into the wilderness for our sake. But here it is. The reason you need to really celebrate Jesus is because uh, there is nothing that you have gone through or will go through that God has not gone through himself. See, that's love. God loved us so much that he did not send somebody to walk for him, but God went himself. But this is where it gets challenging theologically because this is where persons with a low Christology begin to make their assertion because if Jesus was more human than divine, then being in the wilderness is a more horrific experience. Because the wilderness means you don't know where you are. Wilderness means you are lost. There is no GPS. There is no Google Maps. There is no iPhone in which you could use to get assistance. The only thing Jesus could do was simply go through the wilderness. Someone needs to understand this morning that many of us are trying to get out of the wilderness. When God is helping us to understand, you can't get out of the wilderness. You have to go through. See, we think because we pray, because we come to church sometimes, uh, that we should be exempt from a wilderness experience. But please understand that your wilderness experience will happen. And it's just something you have to go through. Well, how can I get joy out of the fact that I have to go through the wilderness? Well, the way you have joy is by knowing that God went through the wilderness too. 
And you just need to understand that if God went through the wilderness and never survived, that would be one thing. But the fact that the Lord went into the wilderness and survived, that's another thing. And so I need to tell everybody who is in the wilderness right now, don't worry, don't get upset. Just begin to celebrate the fact that God made it through. And if God made it through, God's going to ensure you you come through too. And I need some believers this morning to give God some praise. That while you are in the wilderness, you thought it was over. You thought you were finished. But God wants to remind you that it's not over yet. You're just going through a season. And I need somebody to say thank you, God, for reminding me this morning that I shall live. But listen, not only do we see God is in the wilderness, he went for us, but we also see he endured for us. When you look at the text, we find not only does Jesus get sent into the wilderness, the text says he was tempted by Satan. Pay attention to this. Satan does not bother Jesus when he's being baptized. Satan messed with Jesus when he's in the wilderness. Brother Austin, uh, listen, Satan is not going to mess with you when you're on a spiritual high because he knows he can't win. Satan's not going to mess with you when you're getting your praise on in church. But Satan will wait until you find yourself in a wilderness experience. And he'll stay there messing with you while you're in the wilderness because the text says that Jesus stays in the wilderness for 40 days. And every day Jesus was there, Satan began to mess with him. And listen, I need someone to understand that every day you're in the wilderness, the enemy is going to find a way to mess with you. Because the enemy knows that it's in the wilderness that you are at your weakest. But you have to look at the scripture because watch now, look at the text. The text says, Satan tempted, which is past tense. In other words, for 40 days, Jesus was surrounded by temptation, but he does not break. And some of us have been tempted, but you can praise God for the fact you didn't break. And I don't know about you, but somebody in here is going through the trial of their life right now. And you've had more sad days than good days. You've had more rough days than sunny days. But can I tell you, and all that you're going through, you shall not break. Well, how do you know this? How was Jesus able to keep it together when he was tempted all day long. Well, he remembered what God the Father said to him. When he was baptized, he remembered God loved him. It was the love of God the Father that kept Jesus together because Jesus, remember, I got to keep it together because my Father loves me. I shall not turn because my Father loves me. I'm not going to give up because my Father loves me. That's why when you were a child, they taught you to sing, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me so and that's what you got to remember when you're going through the wilderness you just stand firm and remember that the Lord he still loves you and it's that love that will keep you going it's that love that will keep you pushing it's that love that will lift you over and over again I don't know about you but I'm so glad on this Sunday morning 
I know that the Lord, he loves me. And I'm so glad that he loves me, not just on my good days. But I wonder, can somebody testify that the Lord, he loves you even on your bad days. And I'm so glad that the Lord kept on loving us in spite of us. Somebody say, yeah, God loves me. Listen, look in the text. Not only do we find that Jesus went in for us, not only do we see he endured for us, but he does, does all of that so he could share with us. The text says Jesus is surrounded by wild animals. Now, whom turn made companions out of. I want you to miss this. Jesus turned that which was designed and poised to destroy him into that which was to assist him. What are you saying, preacher? When you have a relationship with God, it doesn't matter how many things are against you. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about how many enemies you have. God is able to turn the situation around. And so don't spend time worried about what folk trying to do because, listen, the Bible says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And you need to know uh, that the things that were meant to hurt you will only help you. And for everything that the devil put in your way to hinder you, it will only help you get to where you've been called to be. And so when you see the devil putting things in your way, you ought to say, thank you, God. Here is another stepping stone. Don't you worry. Just know everything is going to be all right because he will make your enemies your footstools. Someone ought to say, thanks be to God that he's able to turn the things uh, that were designed to mess you up uh, and he's able to turn those things uh, into those things that will help you up uh, and I wonder is anybody that can testify uh, I found myself confronted uh, by some stuff that was supposed to mess me up uh, but I found out uh, that those same things uh, that were designed to take me down uh, God used them to pick me up uh, anybody here have a testimony uh, that says God God turned it around. God turned it around. Not just turned it around, but God turned it around for my good. I don't know about you. I'm so glad that I serve a God that won't just turn around, but when he turns it back around, it's for my Good. That means it's to help me. That means it's to bless me. That means it's to cover me. I'm so glad that I serve a God that's able to turn it for my good. But listen, the text tells us the angels take care of him. Uh, Sister Nadine, please pray, pay attention. The angels do not pull Jesus out of the chaos. And when you study the text, the angels are not providing him with a meal. When you understand the text, the purpose of the angels' presence is simply to encourage Jesus. The angels were there to remind Jesus that God was still there. The angels were there to help Jesus understand that this too shall pass. The angels were not responsible for bringing Jesus out of the wilderness. And the Lord dropped in my spirit that sometimes God is not calling you to pull people out of their situations. Sometimes God calls us just to encourage people while they're going through. Because we get it twisted and start feeling sorry for people's situation and try to help get them out of the wilderness. But God sometimes doesn't call us to pull people out. God sometimes calls us to encourage 
encourage people. And I could imagine there were some angels who probably wanted to pull Jesus out of the wilderness, but they could not. They had to sit there and cheer Jesus on. And it's a difficult thing to just sit there and watch somebody go through. But you have to remember that there's a reason for every season. Because watch now the text says uh, Jesus comes out of the wilderness. And in verse 14 we find out that John the Baptist has been arrested. But Jesus comes into Galilee announcing God's good news. Uh, I don't want you to miss this. In verse 13 uh, Jesus is in the midst of the wilderness. Uh, but Brother Graham in verse 14 uh, he's telling the good news. Uh, somebody still missed it. Let me say it again. And in verse 13, uh, Jesus is in the wilderness in an out of control situation uh, but in verse 14 uh, he's telling the good news uh, as I get ready to close now somebody needs to understand that your wilderness experience uh, is not to hurt you uh, but to help somebody else uh, because watch now uh, Jesus was able uh, to preach the good news uh, because he had survived uh, the wilderness uh, that's good news uh, listen for don't need to know what you're wearing to church on Sunday. They don't need to know about where you live and what you drive. What people need to know is that when you were in the wilderness, God took care of you. What people need to know is that God brought you out of the wilderness. I wish I had somebody who could tell somebody that the Lord has seen me through. I wish I had some people who were willing to testify and say, I've been through the wilderness. I've been there. Didn't know what I was going to do. But while I was in the wilderness, I remembered that there is a God that sits high and a God that looks low. While I was in the wilderness, I dared to call on the name that's above every name. While I was in the wilderness, yeah, I lost some friends. While I was in the wilderness, I lost some money. While I was in the wilderness, I lost a job. But I'm so glad that through all that I've been through, for everything that I've experienced, the one thing I can still say is that the Lord is still good to me. And somebody is going to ask you, wait a minute, how is God good when you had to go through the wilderness? How is God good when you lost some stuff, you had heartache, you had pain, you were talked about, you were mistreated? How is God still good? And you can tell them that, yeah, all that happened to me. But God's good because I'm still here. But here's a catch. Not only am I here, but I'm better than what I was. That's how I know God is good. Because when I came up out of the wilderness, I wasn't the same no more. But there's been a change. A change in me. And I wonder this morning, is there anybody that just wants to testify that there's been a change in you? And that change didn't come from your best friend. It didn't come from your mother or your father. But that change came from the world. Who's able? It came from the world who was able to turn your midnight into day. The world who was able to wipe the tears from your eyes. That change came from the world who still has all power in his hands. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. 
I'm so glad that the Lord, the Lord, the Lord took care of me. I'm through preaching, everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen, hear me. I want you to understand your wilderness is not the end. You got to go through it. But here's the beauty of it. You're not by yourself. And see, you've been upset with God because you said, God, why am I still going through this? I've been praying to you. I've been talking to you. I've been asking you to get me out of here. And God has kept you there. And he said, God, I'm tired of this place. Why you got me in this wilderness experience? I've been faithful. I've been praying, following what you've called me to do. But I'm still here. Why? Can I tell you this morning, it's not about you. See, sometimes that got to rest in our spirit. It's not about you. So fixated on how you're feeling, you don't understand the work God's trying to do through you. God wants to use you for his glory. Would you just let God be God this morning? This morning, I want to know, will you trust God with where you are? It doesn't have to make sense to everybody else. But this morning, I want to know, God wants to know, really, will you trust him? The wilderness is not your end. It's just a temporary place. Will you trust him? And maybe this morning, you know somebody else who's going through the wilderness too. And maybe they're at the end of their rope. They're tired of where they are. They're tired of experiencing the same thing over and over again. They're tired of being taken advantage of. They're tired of the loss. They're tired of it all. It's stressing them out. They don't know what to do. Would you pray for them right now? Pray for every person you know that's in the wilderness. Because can I tell you, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. God will hear your prayers. Sometimes people can't pray for themselves. That's a reality. Some people are in such a difficult place. They don't even know how to pray for themselves. Would you pray for them right now? Would you call their name to the Lord? I want you to call it right now. Call their name. Speak their name. Pray for them. Ask God to speak to them. Because their life has purpose. But it's hard to see it in the wilderness. They have power. They haven't even tapped into. They can't experience it because they feel they're in the wilderness. Pray for them. Pray for them. Hallelujah. Your prayer will change lives. Hallelujah. Pray for them. The wilderness is not a death sentence. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Spirit of living God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, for just being who you are. God, you've been so good to us. 
We really can't even put it into words. But God, this morning we're praying to you. First, God, we want to ask for forgiveness. Because through our thinking, we were believing we were being done wrong. We were believing that you had abandoned us. You had forgotten about us. God, we began to harbor resentment towards you. And God, for that, we want to apologize this morning. Because we better understand that the wilderness is not the place you send us to just to punish us. But it's the place you're using to build us up. So God, we thank you for putting your hand upon us during this season. Because we can testify that through this time, we're better than what we were. God, we're grateful this morning. For God, there have been names that have been lifted to you. Situations that you're aware of. God, where there are other individuals who are going through the wilderness right now. And God, we're praying for each one of them. We're praying, one, that you would speak to them and help them to understand this is not the end. God, help them to see that they're almost out of this season. Let them see your hand working while they go through this wilderness experience. And God, we pray that you would help us to discern our role. Because God, sometimes it can be difficult to watch our loved ones in a wilderness and when we're called to just be encouragers God help us because we don't want to step into a place and be out of your will but God we want you to understand we just love our family our friends and we don't want to see them go down we don't want to see them suffer so God would you help us to be what it is you need us to be in this season if it's to encourage give us the words to say god if it's you who are even calling us to pull people through the wilderness god give us strength whatever it is that you're assigning us to do god we want to do it for your glory we thank you god for what you're doing in this season and then, God, we pray for individuals who may not know you, don't know who you are, don't have a relationship with you. This morning, if you're not saved, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do, just lift your hand to the Lord. God, we thank you. And maybe someone who doesn't have a church home, a place where people can pray with you and for you. And God sent you on assignment to be a part of this ministry. If that's you, just lift your hand to the Lord. God, we thank you right now for what you're doing. We thank you, God, for what you have done. And God, we're overjoyed about the things you're going to do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. I want you to make sure after we close out this service, please smash that Zoom link so that you can be enrolled in our Sunday Morning Academy. You can join our scholars as they learn more about the Word. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is but one true church, apostolic and universal. Let us now reverently and sincerely declare by the use of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, but on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he now sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence it shall come the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless.